Welcome everyone back to This Dream House, the podcast that's all about the house. I am your host, Mark Kalix, AKA Chef Mark. And I'm here running solo today because my co-host Kevin Draco is on vacation with his lovely wife. I think they're, gosh, they're somewhere warm. I think they're on a boat, maybe the Caribbean. Do you know? No, no, no one knows. All we know is he's having a great time and he works hard, so he deserves that vacation. Happy holidays, everyone. This is episode six, season one, and we're approaching Christmas. It's just around the corner. So we've got an amazing program for everyone. Thanks for tuning in. What are we going to do today? Well, we're going to have our guest, Jennifer Lowry. Jen. Jen is uh, someone that helps us so much, so tremendously with all of the projects we have around here. So we're going to talk to her. She's a designer. She's a... uh, stager she's just a uh, this creative powerhouse when it comes to making homes look amazing so i can't wait uh to talk to her i've got some great questions then we're going to go over my list top 10 holiday towns and why and finally we have some cooking tips so an amazing episode coming of course i'd like to thank appliance factory and mattress kingdom for sponsoring this dream house i think we're ready to roll jen hi there welcome hi, jen. You. I'm so well. So you are Jen with JL Interiors. Yes, JL Interior Design. Okay, give me the elevator pitch. So what what do I know what you do, but tell our, our lif- listening audience, what do you do? Yeah, so we specialize in creating organized, functional, and stylish interior spaces. Um, what sets apart us apart is our dedication to providing tailored solutions for every budget. Uh, We offer a diverse spectrum of services from DIY recommendations all the way to complete whole home designs and remodels. So I know you as the person that makes the magazine look great. uh, Colorado's Best Kitchens magazine. Right. Um, And my role in that, uh, I'm the food editor. So I write recipes and have articles and it's a, a tremendous amount of fun. So we both know the editor very well, Ben. Uh, and I'm always, oh, Jen's coming out. I can't wait. The photos <laughs> should look amazing. It's pictures of some of Colorado's best kitchens. So how much of your job is staging, and not only for magazines, but maybe for resales? Yeah, it really divides. Probably half, half of my services pertain to staging, and that's still an umbrella because a lot of the projects I work on are for clients who are looking to sell in three to five years, but they uh, need to get that quick update and they still want to plan for the furnishings. Is it something that they just need some help with redesigning what they have? Or should we go ahead and bring in our furniture rentals, which we offer at our Denver warehouse? Oh, that's neat. Okay. So, um, so you're doing interior design. You're, you've got this kind of this unique business where you're, you're renting, you're renting furnishings to freshen up a house. Yes. We we host a warehouse curated specifically to several designs, one of which is transitional, which is our go-to for our stagings. Yeah. Um, And so, yeah, so we rent and sell whole home designs, just depending off again, if it's remodels or if it's just their, maybe an Airbnb -er who's looking to host and they need to, rent or purchase, you know, they have the ability to come to our warehouse and see touch feel for themselves. And we have a workroom space. We can work with them collaboratively that way. So yeah, it is really an A to Z interior service operation we got going on here. (laughs) That's amazing. Okay. So let's say you come in and you, um, I'm selling a home and you're staging it for me. How often does the new home buyer, the homeowner, say, I have to have all this furniture. I can't imagine making this house look any better. The new homeowner is buying all the furniture off of you. Does that happen quite frequently? I imagine it does. Oh, yeah, as far as the potential buyer? (laughs) Yeah. Yes, yes. So we just offer a flat rate. And if it, you know, we would rather sell the whole stage. Uh, We're not really looking to, you know, pick and choose. Uh, But yeah, if they want the move-in ready piece, we can absolutely support that and then refer them to Appliance Factory for, you know, if they want to go ahead and purchase a mattress, we do keep yeah. those. But mm-hmm. beyond that, they're welcome to any of the staging items in the home. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. So it seems like you have quite a few tools here. I'm just going to read some of them off. Uh, one-hour consultation, 3D scans, vendor shop experience, client dashboard, 
Yes. I mean, this seems like a lot of tools that you've created for your clients. So can you speak to any of those tools and how it's, because that sounds complicated to me. So how does well, this make somebody's life easier? <laughs> it's a mouthful for sure, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know, it really is just with the technology, you know, we started out with the whole Google run and then we had Pinterest and Instagram and just, you know, learning our own technology, how we can all work together. So it really helps to have what we call the best umbrella is this client dashboard. So, you know, whether they're sending us picture images from any of their social media sites that they're finding or um, there's links to products that they're interested in. Um, we like get that all downloaded into one system so then we can collaborate with them on our designs, our mood boards. We do the 3D scan, as you mentioned, so we can get a holistic view um, right down to VR. So if they really want to get really down and dirty and want to stand in their space and see it, you know, complete 3D image um, through like, like a basically like a lens um, through their phone app. We have all of those tools available. So it really helps everybody because then, you know, think of it, the office hours are nine to four and maybe they can't peek in with a glass of wine until 10 o'clock at night. You know, they can pop in, they can decline, they can comment on some of the products, they can, you know, collaborate with us at any time of day. So it's in our inbox the next morning and we can make sure we can catch up to them and communicate and keep those timelines tight. So... Yeah. I like that. Yeah, because then you have uh, you can kind of maybe get into the head a little bit more of what your clients are expecting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, if you don't know what you want, like um, yeah. I've done problems before, and I'm, I'm like, I don't know what I want. I just know I want it to look masculine, but like a family <laughs> lives here. And you know, and the designer that I had working with me is like, yeah, that's that doesn't mean anything. And I'm like, ah, but we got there. Yeah, yeah it's a language barrier, you know, and rather than try to teach my clients all the appropriate design words, I, a lot of times it is for those picture images. So we don't really, there is no language barrier with that. That helps. And then, of course, like we'll pick up a couple fun words along the way. We're like, okay, that doodad or that fuzzy thing, you know, whatever. Like if that's their language, we'll, we'll, we'll acclimate. You got it. You got it. I love it. Okay. So um, are there any particular brands? that really stand out to you in the furniture space or the appliance space, mm. cabinetry, flooring, that just you always come back to because you know it's right. just going to be wonderful. Gosh, that is, that's quite a list. I mean, speaking to like furniture, I definitely have my favorite go-tos. Um, let's see, off the top, I love Moe's, Home Collection, Sagebrook, mm. um, Modway, Classic Home. These are vendors I go to um, see at Vegas World Market twice a year. So we're, you know, we're doing the look, see, feel, touch for our clients. And then we purchase in advance to have, you know, a fair amount of it locally here for the quick service. Um, so those are my favorite go-tos, mainly because of scale and because of quality. So mm -hmm. it depends on our client, of course, you know, if they're more budget served or they really are more focused on the quality piece, we can mix and match to fit the budget. Um, but those would be my favorites there. Yeah. Um, like remodels, um, love Thermador, uh, love KitchenAid. Those are my favorites um, so far. Um, and then what else? Um, plumbing. Um, for my bathroom models and kitchen, I love Delta. Delta's a favorite. Um, I love some of their new finishes. They have a really cool champagne finish we're falling in love with over here. So um, it's always fun to see the trends. We're always jumping into their showrooms and checking it out. Um, and then what else? Cabinet lines, you know, honestly, it's all over the map. There are so many. And it, it really does come down to price point for the client. And if sure. they really need the semi-custom or we can stick to more of the box type um so it's really hard to really say i have a favorite mm -hmm. <laughs> on that one yeah, yeah it's, i mean the the budget could be you know you could triple your budget and still have uh -huh. you know basically a box with a door and then it really comes down to those details yeah so for us yeah for us we just we have a handful of vendors we work with that have many lines so they're keeping us abreast to like the price changes and, you know, the quality and, you know, the soft clothes and um, 
uh, soft close and dovetail, you know, it's just, it's mm -hmm. almost an expectation at this point. So it's really not hard to find a cabinet maker that just doesn't throw that in, which is nice. So, yeah. Hmm, yeah. Are you still getting requests for, particularly in kitchens, the, the quadruple white, the, the white backsplash, the white countertop, the white cabinetry, the white lighting, the white walls, you know, kind of that, you know, subway look. I, when that first became a trend, I loved it, but you know, it's, yeah. it, it seems to be pervasive and everywhere. And what I've been told is that it's going to date people's kitchens to the early 2000s. Oh, so is that still a request? And then what's, what's next? What is the, yeah. the next trend there? You know, I think that that was, um, yeah, a trending time. Um, and I think that we just need to evolve some of that a little bit, especially for those, maybe they did that, uh, concept maybe five years ago and mm -hmm. they're thinking about, okay, in the next five years, like, I really don't want to do a full, full remodel. Um, so a lot of that, they can trend out themselves with just simply a backsplash or swapping, you know, just the Island top or change out that hardware. Um, there's some things they can do to, you know, no. keep it going, but I, I like that you have an interesting perspective. What I've heard from other designers that you're saying that's a blank slate and what, maybe that is a good place to start. Yeah. It, it, it's certain. Yeah, no, I, I, I would say, so I can appreciate what they're saying, speaking to like, it just gets really, it's, there's not, um, yeah, it's, you want to have some trending piece into, into it at some point. And it sounds mm -hmm. like in those cases, it was so timeless. There was no texture. Like that's another element we love to add to our backsplashes specifically, just getting, mm -hmm. A couple of different pots or like you talk about subway tile that's that will be forever it's just a matter of the type of subway tile you're choosing and what the stone is so you know those are always wins um absolutely and i have an article out in um i think it's colors best um coming up here that talks mm -hmm. a lot about that too those trending timeless um kitchens which is a great read for sure yeah yeah, so Colorado's Best Kitchens magazine, yes. um, which I believe the fall issue is out already. And uh, texture was a big um, focus for mine as well, texture and food. And I think I quoted oh. your article about texture. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> I didn't plagiarize, I quoted. <laughs> um, so um, how often do you get pulled in to do a whole house? So nuts to bolts, top to bottom. Um, yeah. You know, so the bedrooms and the bathrooms and the kitchens and there's a whole oh, list. Of a lot of. <laughs> um, not enough. I, I love those designs because we really have a better um, picture of the whole budget um, where we can, you know, strategically place what I call like different buckets, you know, whether the focus is, OK, you know, we were doing this whole home remodel or whole home furnishings and you know, the key areas are the great room and the master. And then beyond that, you know, here's our price point, you know, and just playing with numbers like that, it makes it a lot easier for, for, I think, clients to figure out what becomes more important to them. Um, and also understand the cost of design um, as a whole, you know, all those awesome inspiration pictures you see, there's a lot going on in those that you don't really realize till you sit down and see on our client dashboard, there's like a hundred objects to, <laughs> Right. Oh, whoa, let's help you slim this down a little bit. But um, they're great, especially with our warehouse. It's made it a lot easier to order everything in and make sure it's, you know, there's no cracks, breaks so that they're getting, you know, sure the Joanna Gaines feel they're getting the, the one install, you know, everything comes in, we get it done and they're coming back and they're surprised and excited. Like that's the best feeling ever. So I could never get enough of those. That's that's incredible. Yeah, I, I go into a lot of homes myself, and, and what I've noticed between the homes that are merely great as opposed to outstanding mm -hmm. is that detail. And I was once told that it's the final 2 to 3% that is also the most expensive and <laughs> the most painful um, to get right, you know. Right. And <laughs> if you have any experiences with that final 2%, you have maybe a story you'd like to share of like, man, like, like for example, color of light bulbs. Like that always drives me nuts when I go into oh. the color of a light bulb is wrong, and I'm like, that's a that's a two percent project. Like, like get I, up on the ladder. <laughs> yeah, I can't say maybe maybe a lot of lived lessons in the process. I've been doing this, you know, 
uh, over a decade now. So, um, but speaking of light bulbs, that's funny. Like we just had this conversation this morning in our workroom space that it's really important we get all the light bulbs ordered with the light fixtures, regardless of the client's aware, because the last thing they need is a delivery and they don't have the light bulb and the right ones, you know, and you got the cool lighting and the warm lighting and it just sets the tone for the space. And I love having that control to have the opportunity to have those conversations with them because then the art we're picking, the, the final, you know, finishes you're talking about earlier, they all come into play, all those colors and the vibrancy and you just how you want that whole environment to feel is overall based on that lighting. So that's really key for sure. And it is, it's the decor and the florals and those little pieces. It's like, that's what creates the layers, the texture, all those soft elements. Um, and they're probably the most, yeah, probably heartbreaking for some of my whole home design clients for sure, because we're at the end and we've got their budget and we left a, a specific budget or a bucket planned, so to speak, for that amount. And it's just like, I can't believe you want, you know, X amount for this vase. And it's like, well, here's three different vases. 20, yeah. 50, and 60, <laughs> you pick, you know, so we try to make it easy enough for them to be able to still fit their budget, but it is tough when they're like, wow, I really like that $60 vase. And, you know, it's, but as long as we're it's offering the options, you know, when every they, time. it's the $60 vase, I swear, <laughs> it's never the $20 vase. <laughs> I like the $60 vase. Yeah. <laughs> one, one last question. Um, <laughs> So do you see the smart home um, starting to be le less of a trend and more of a normal thing? And does okay. that inform how you're designing a kitchen or designing a home rather? It takes um, advantage of smart features. It, it really doesn't affect me more probably the general contractors just because they need to be more aware of, you know, all the pre-wiring and all that that goes into it. Um, but a lot of the products now are, yeah, just assumed and integrated, you know, anywhere from the touchless to the USB and the medicine or what we call mirrored cabinets. Mm. Um, yeah. And then, of course, the appliances now, you know, you can, well, you know all about this yep. where you can, you know, set it and off you go for the day and <laughs> everything's. Can I tell you the coolest okay. thing I saw in a home the other day? It was a built into the cabinetry parking spot for their Roomba vacuum. Yeah. Really? Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to show this off, they go, okay, Sally, or whatever they named their Roomba. Yeah. And I went, okay. And then it just wow. went home. And just a little <laughs> bit of it just kind of stuck out. So you knew it was, you knew if it was parked or not. But right. that's I was like, that, <laughs> that's cool. And, and the homeowner, she's like, I saw that in the list of options and I had to have it. Yeah. yeah. So oh. I was like, that's the most integrated. Uh, <laughs> That's the most bolder thing I've seen all day. Right. <laughs> Nothing well, seems to confuse me. If you can dream it, you know, it can be done. Right. Yeah, that's... I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about holiday towns and how, how, um, well, maybe just about what we're doing for the holidays as well. So we're going to take a brief break. I'd like everybody to stick around. We'll be back in just a minute. I'm Chef Mark with This Dream House, and we're back. And I'd like to thank our guest, Jen Lowry, for uh, telling us a lot about your business and about design and your f philosophy. Before we move on, uh, how can our listeners find you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, best way is to check out our website, www.jlinteriordesign.net. Um, and then... You can, of course, check into our social media, which is JL Interior Design Denver, and DM us. Wonderful. Okay. And uh, do you have a phone number? I do. <laughs> I don't call myself often. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. I get that. <laughs> I'm like, um, off the, I can uh, I'm not, I'm not going to give you my cell phone, though. I'm sorry. Like, that, that's... <laughs> I'm with you. I almost no one has my cell phone number. <laughs> oh my goodness. No lessons, lessons learned. We've definitely come a long way. Um, 
I've got actually five numbers, but my best corporate number that anyone can reach me and set up a free discovery call would probably be best at, I'm gonna have to take a break on that because I don't have it in front of me. No problem, but I will say that if you wanna see Jen's work, and yeah. you see Colorado's Best uh, Kitchens magazine on the newsstand, or if you get one in your house, if you're in the Denver metro area, um, take a look because she's staging those kitchens and making them look as fantastic as they are. Oftentimes we'll go into, I know the photography team at the magazine will go in, and it's a blank slate. We request that the homeowner gets rid of all their stuff. Mm -hmm. And so you're bringing in your own tools, but you're also utilizing some of the homeowner things as well. Is that yes. how I understand it? Yes, we can incorporate, we call that a redesign. Sometimes we're just mixing, mix and matching some of what they have and just giving them that fresh feel or they're moving into a brand new home and they're only take just a few pieces and the rest, you know, needs to be redone. But I do have my phone number now if you want okay. it. Okay, fantastic. Hey. <laughs> it's 303. Two two eight seven zero eight one, and okay. that's the best number for a free discovery call. Free discovery call, wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's amazing that you off, your business offers that. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, we're going uh, we're going to talk about uh, holiday towns now. I'm going to talk just briefly about my personal experience with the holidays. I working as a chef for over thirty years. It would be oftentimes uh, I wouldn't get a day off between the, the two weeks before Thanksgiving and the two weeks after New Year's. I might get I might get Christmas Day off, but maybe not. I might have to work. So I went probably 20 years and I really didn't celebrate Christmas uh, in a traditional way. Although, you know, grew up, you know, with Santa Claus visiting the house. Fun fact, both of my brothers are born on Christmas two years apart. Crazy, right? So I'm an August baby. So it was a very interesting time in, in my in my family. But now that I um, I do this job as a celebrity chef, I get the holidays off, and I'm getting more and more excited every year uh, for the holidays. Um, did, did you put a tree up this year? This is the first year I didn't. Oh, it's liberating. Yeah. <laughs> I know I feel like a bah humbug over here, but you know, like it's because I do this all the time, designing and decorating and ordering, and I haven't purchased anything for Christmas. Like I, <laughs> you need you need to give yourself a break. If that's how you give yourself a break, then you have to do it. I get it. I get it. I have four trees in my house, so nice. <laughs> we have a small we have a small little cottage, and and there's a tree in every corner. I swear, but. But you know what? I do love it. I, I, yeah. I, I do enjoy it. So here we go. It's best holiday towns. And what constitutes a great holiday town? In mm -hmm. my book, that would be great climate or weather. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's warm, but that you can go and enjoy. The climate is part of the experience. Mm. Um, budget friendly. So something that like you're going to not necessarily inexpensive, but your dollars are going to go a long way for what you get. Um, easy transportation. So can you get there easily? So, for example, Telluride, Colorado is a wonderful place. They, the Main Street is amazing, but it is a solid seven, eight hour drive over several mountain passes to get there. So although I love Telluride, I personally, I knock that off the list for us Coloradoans, because it's hard to get to. It can be treacherous to drive there. Hmm. Um, and if it's the most crowded place in the world, that might not make a good holiday town. So something that might be off the beaten path would uh, add a couple of points to the, uh, um, to the list. And then finally, just uh, holiday activities that are unique to that town or region. So for example, if you're up in the mountains and you're skiing, that would be you know, something that you can only do, let's say, in the Rocky Mountains versus if you're in, I don't know, the middle of Kansas, can't necessarily go skiing. So, you know, activities, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to go through my list here and I'd be curious if any <laughs> spring to mind for you. And just so the audience knows, I did not tell Jen that we were doing this. I'm just kind of going <laughs> and I'm going to see if her. I would have put that had I known. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. That's not how we work here at the Stream House. Kevin and I, we both believe in. <laughs> Bring some surprises on our guests. Uh, 
So number 10, um, and I thought long and hard about this one. It, it, it's a simple one, but it's Orlando, Florida. Mm. And I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big Disney fan. I mean, Disney's cool and the cartoons are fine, but I don't really seek it out. But I have been told by many people that if you're going to go to Disney World, go during the winter, go during the holidays because the lights are fantastic. Yeah, you're, uh, you're I went. I guess. We did okay. that. Yeah, my kids were like two and four years old, and that was yeah, that was on fire. That was amazing. That is an absolute. I agree. Bucket list. Okay, fantastic. Well, you thought you saw light. Yeah, you know it's already decked out, but you know the the amount of time and effort and in, in, intricacy in their decorating is unbelievable. Unbelievable. How was the weather? <laughs> You know, it was um, humid. So coming from Colorado, right? Like it, it kept me warm. So like we had our rain ponchos and whatnot here and there, but I, I loved it. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold, but it was the humidity, you know, it's still, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> and is, it, is it less crowded at that time of year or is it nuts? as far as uh the crowd you know, well you know that was when i was like quite the mommy manager and we had it down to a science on what area went jump the you know quick fast pass to you name it so and and going during certain weekdays to different yep. ones you know we we had that all planned out so it didn't bother us but definitely like the fireworks shows and things like that they had were that much more magnificent so you get the bigger crowds to those events and sure, have sure. To plan you know but yeah, it was amazing. Amazing. Right. I'm glad I made the list then. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad. Wow, it's starting off strong. <laughs> yes. Um, so this one made the list. I've never heard of it, but uh, in my research, um, I love a Bavarian village and I love feeling like I'm in the Alps without necessarily having to leave the country. Leaven, mm -hmm. Leavenworth, Washington, which is Washington State. Mm -hmm. um, they're very well known. They have a Bavarian village and um, it they they're year round. They, they're talking about Christmas. Um, so uh -huh. I've never, uh, uh, I've never been to uh, Leavenworth, but I've heard, uh, good things about this and you uh -huh. gotta love a good Bavarian village, whether it's in Bavaria, whether it's in Germany or in Washington state, that's yeah. always going to be a great time during the holidays. And I'm thinking the Christmas market, the German style Christmas market, yeah. and probably, uh, probably a beer hall or two. Uh, that mm -hmm. sounds like a, like a pretty good town. Sometimes those small towns will surprise you. Um, number eight is one of our favorites to visit. We just love this town. Um, and it's because of the rich history, uh, United States history, and that's Richmond, Virginia. Huh. Huh. Right, yeah. So it's an hour and a half, two hours south of Washington, D.C. And uh, what's interesting about it is the James River runs through it. So you have quite a bit of kind of an interesting uh, mix of river culture, um, a nice size city, amazing food, the people couldn't be more pleasant. Um, and it was the, the capital of the Confederacy. So um, there is all kinds of museums. So it's cold and humid there, but what makes it a great winter destination is that they do a great job uh, <laughs> decorating the square and there's lots of museums and indoor activities to do. Um, you kind of have to be a history buff, uh, but gosh, I mean, what's more interesting than U.S. history, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> World history? Good answer. I'm not a big history <laughs> fan, so I can't help you there. <laughs> yeah. And then these next two, oh, they're both Colorado, and they're two of my favorites. Uh, Manitou Springs, Colorado. Have you been to Manitou Springs? I have not. Okay. So Manitou Springs is just west of downtown Colorado Springs, like 10 minutes west. And there's a Christmas village at the base of Pikes Peak. Uh, the only problem with visiting there in the winter is that you can't go to the top of Pikes Peak. They close the road, but sometimes you can go halfway up. Um, mm -hmm. But the main street, the main town is a couple of um, uh, streets that are just decorated to the nines really cool and interesting businesses, wonderful restaurants, mm. and surprisingly affordable. Um, it's definitely got a hippie vibe to it, you know, so I love that. And then there's some wonderful hotels down there that always have great deals um, because they're more of a summer destination. Um, so when you go in the winter, you're guaranteed to get a great, uh, a great um, 
deal. And then if you're coming in from out of town, there's mm -hmm. an airport right there as well. So it's an easy Uber ride. Uh, so Manitou yeah. Springs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Seven Falls. There's a series of waterfalls yeah. that you can go visit. And in the winter, they freeze over. So it's one of those towns where I think everything that's great in the summer is even better in the winter. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, totally. Yeah. You made me think of, um, not to get off your list, but um, Georgetown. That reminds me a lot of just that Colorado yes. small town, lots of cute little shops and trinkets right. and unique desserts. And yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to go check out. I'm going to go check it out. Yeah, this that's the... And, and close to town, close to Denver as well. Right, somewhere close, yeah. yeah. Now, number six here, this is just kind of a catch-all. I'm saying Breckenridge, but what I mean by Breckenridge is Breckenridge, Aspen, or Vail. <laughs> uh, choose one. Choose yeah. one. World-class skiing, great, um, kind of a luxury style vacation. Um, it can be expensive, but you get a lot because there's so much to do um, and – world-class Colorado skiing, hopefully great snow. Um, the thing is, it's becoming increasingly crowded uh, and harder and harder to visit. So like, for example, uh, my family, we all ski, but we're not skiing this year because, man, I just, the crowds, uh, you know, I just don't, I don't know. I mean, to stand in the line an hour and a half or two hours for every run. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. Oh, no, is right. So, <laughs> But I would say I would say any of those wonderful Colorado ski towns, choose one, uh, and it makes a great vacation. Even if you don't ski, those three towns, I mean, you can just, gosh, you can walk around all day and, and entertain yourself. It's really a fantastic um, vacation for anybody. Yeah, I mean, Winter Park. Winter Park is the one that I'm most familiar. Yeah, yeah Winter Park would be very much on the list as well i would say that winter park for those people that don't know the village of winter park and the ski resort of winter park are a couple miles apart uh -huh. whereas what makes aspen breckenridge and vale unique is that the village is also where you get on the chairlift right. so uh, once you're there you're there you don't need a car or any transportation but winter park does have great busing and really great public transportation um, and I think there's even ways to ski in the town if you're, you know, adventurous. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, those are all, all good options. Mm -hmm. um, here's one I've never been to in the winter. Um, and it's uh, um, in California. It's Caramel by the Sea. Caramel or Caramel. There's a couple different ways to pronounce that. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, near Monterey Bay. Uh, Monterey Bay Peninsula. This is the peninsula. Monterey's here. And Caramel's here. And uh, I've been there in the summer. I went to a wedding many, many years ago. And it's just charming and wonderful. It's not too crowded. Yeah. It is chilly and it's going to be humid. So I would say one thing is that it's, it's not necessarily the most winter friendly <laughs> um, climate. Like yeah. Breckenridge, you know, it's dry. Uh, you walk around the mountains, you bear, almost need a t-shirt, but mm -hmm. uh, in the dead of winter. But they have a, a really beautiful main street and a town and they, decorated and they really go all out for that Christmas look there. Cool. Um, and here's one you might have been to. Have you ever been to Santa Fe, Santa Fe, New Mexico? No. No. OK, so just an hour, <laughs> just an hour north of Albuquerque. It's easy to fly into Albuquerque or yeah. a seven hour drive from Denver. Yeah. Um, and they're famous for these red uh, lit, lit lanterns. They don't light the town with like LEDs or anything like that. They light these lanterns. And they have those adobe style buildings. Every building is kind of matching. They have a big square that's just beautiful. There's a famous church there. And then also you can go skiing. There's a small ski area that's very affordable. Oh. So, um, and Santa Fe is beautiful. In there. There. I'm sorry? Sounds like an all-in-one affair. You could do a little yeah. bit of everything then. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So Santa Fe, if you've never been uh, in the summer or ever, and Santa Fe is very well known for its art, its artist communities. Uh, the original Meow Wolf is in Santa Fe. And mm -hmm. uh, it's really, I've been to that, and that's really a trip. So um, if you got a couple hours, go check out Meow Wolf, support the artists there. Um, let's see. Uh, you, you spend any time in North Carolina? 
No, apparently so, I don't get out much. <laughs> oh, no. So the Outer Banks, uh, the Outer Banks, North Carolina, choose a town um, and go on a boat tour. Um, a lot of the boat tours feature um, boat tours in and around homes that are nicely decorated. And you can see them from the water and the lights that are reflecting off the water. I have, I'm having trouble reading my own notes here. Uh, Beauford, uh, North Carolina is the one that they recommended because there's lots of boat tours and homes that are heavily decorated right on the waterfront. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, doesn't that sound kind of fun? You know, so. Yeah, unique. And I love, that stood out to me because it's the opposite of mountains. Being from Colorado, at least myself personally, I'm always seeking out a mountaintop, but what's mm -hmm. the opposite to me, the opposite of a mountain? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, have you been to Glenwood Springs? Uh, it's a favorite go-to for sure. Yeah. That's, that's I, I have to go at least mm, twice a year. That's, that's yeah. It's and a it's beautiful and, and like very connected, easy to get to. You're talking mm -hmm. like just about jumping on it in a quick Uber or just a quick jaunt. Like everything is right there, which is super nice. That's right. And um, the hot springs are wonderful. Mm. I, don't know, I mean, if you've ever sat in a hot spring while it's snowing, you know, yes. it's, it's eight degrees outside, but you're hot and it's encapsulated by this warm uh, sulfur uh, laden water and it's just wow. cozy and there's great hotel deals there, wonderful restaurants. Like you said, everything is right downtown. It's easy mm -hmm. to get around. Um, there's skiing just around the corner at sunlight uh, for the you skiers. And that's one of my favorite ski areas it's a tiny little postage stamp of a ski area but they host mm -hmm. uh they built both some of the steepest uh, tree skiing in colorado and family friendly stuff too so when we get take the family we have some new skiers with us and mm -hmm. they're just you know they just want to go two miles per hour down a green fantastic <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll meet you at the lodge uh, <laughs> So Glenwood Springs, and the only reason that's not number one is because number one was so obvious to me that I had to put it at the top, and that would be New York City. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And New York City for the holidays, if you haven't been, I will say, yes, it is cold. However, there's so many opportunities to dip in and out of buildings. Transportation's easy between cabs, Ubers, and subway. Don't be intimidated by the subway. Um, <laughs> It can be a little expensive, but it depends on where you stay. So particularly if you stay out closer to an airport and take a train in from Queens or somewhere in Brooklyn, um, hotels are fine. Um, you know, if you stay right on Times Square, it can be a little expensive. Um, so many food options there. I mean, just, gosh, you turn a corner and uh, the food is always unbelievable. Um, it can be heavily crowded, but it's so big that um, the city can absorb hundreds of thousands of people at right. a time, like, like no big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course around Rockefeller Center, all the holiday activities, the big tree, and uh, you can, wow. from there you can go up to uh, Central Park and do some ice skating. And that's all within a half hour walk from each other. Mm -hmm. All of that um, wonderful holiday stuff, a handsome cab ride around the park and just, Hopefully you get a little snow. It's just wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I, I lived in New York City for five years. I don't know if you knew that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So then are you a big musical connoisseur? Mm, I, I do like musicals. Um, you, you'll never catch me singing or dancing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we saw a couple shows when I was there. It was very expensive. As a as a young culinarian on a tight budget, oh, you know, I had a, I had a basement apartment. I took the subway, which is underground, to a basement kitchen. So <laughs> when you're when you're a line cook in New York City making just over minimum wage, basically you live underground to make it affordable. Um, that was a long time ago, Jen. I was <laughs> I had a head full of hair and a few less wrinkles. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Do you, um, so what do you think of my list, my holiday list? Yeah, no, that's a great plethora. Like that's, mm -hmm. I would say I would add at least Colorado, just speaking of Colorado, I love the Georgetown I mentioned, and then nothing like downtown Denver. There's yeah. just always lots of all their restaurants. Everyone's decked out. It's just beautiful. And especially when the winter weather has been on the warmer side, it's 
like so nice to just be able to just enjoy that whole 16th street experience. Yeah. Um, and then, um, what else, I guess I don't, I haven't done this, but I heard Elitch's is doing some kind of light show. Oh, I thought they were, you know, I did, I'm surprised they're still around. So whatever's going on, they're making it work, but they have different yeah. experiences for families to, you know, now, yeah. But, it's rumored um, that they're moving the park out east near the Gaylord Resort, and then that's going to turn into condoms. So, yeah. yeah, so lots of work for well for both of us. Right. <laughs> People are going to need appliances, and they're going to need their kitchens designed. This is true. <laughs> yeah, we'll be ready. <laughs> well, so do you cook for the holidays? Um, you know, I have. Okay. Um, my kids are in college now and they're kind of into their own thing. So, um, you know, it's usually grandma hosts and we all go do that. But yeah, over the years, definitely, you know, turkey, the, everything Thanksgiving is just a repeat. We love all the same fixings and yeah. I love that. I love that. For, for, my, for my family, it's Thanksgiving turkey, Christmas ham, New Year's Eve, prime rib. Oh, so that's just, I don't know why it's turned out that way, but that's the way it is. Yeah. So I've got some uh, holiday tips on glazing a ham. I have a tradition where I go on to one of the morning news shows a couple days before uh, Christmas and I show everybody how to glaze a ham. Like I get out of there with, you know, the morning hosts and it's something that I've been doing for years in the Denver market. Um, and my recipe is very simple, but it's important to get uh, a nice ham. You know, hams are pre-cooked. You know, you don't really need to, they're, they're cured and you don't need to do anything other than heat them up. It's not like a turkey where you have to go to the trouble of actually like introducing <laughs> the right amount of heat for a certain yeah. amount of time. Yes. Hams, are so, hams are so easy. I like to do the cross hatch. So I cut it like this way, then that way, all the way around. So you get like the bits that stick out. Um, and then the glaze is really simple. Brown sugar, mustard, spiced rum, and orange juice. Yeah. And the, what the spiced rum does is it takes care of all those Christmas flavors. The nutmeg, the cinnamon, the, the cardamom, the, the ginger, all those flavors are in uh, spiced rum. I like uh, the dark rum, the Kraken dark rum. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And I can't... Don't let me drink any of that because I'll go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's wonderful to cook with. And then the mustard is really what holds it together. It's like the emulsifier. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people add honey to this, but I find that with honey, it gets too much sugar and it can caramelize too fast. Yeah. And then brush, brush, brush. And then I love it. I take my torch, my creme brulee torch, and I and just, yeah, and just kind of brown the outside and get it like candy so it's almost like got like a like a like a hardness to it you know like yeah candy crossed over the ham because the beautiful thing about ham is that it's a vessel for like absorbing those sweet flavors and i just love that so um <laughs> and how much should you buy well it's about a pound per person so that's another question i get all the time how much food should i buy for the holidays a pound per person on the ham is going to do the trick. Turkey, you want to go a pound and a half or two pounds because you have bones that you aren't going to be able to eat, you know, and carcass right. and all that kind of stuff. But, um, and then, you know, it, it just get it in the low oven and just kind of let it go low and slow all day. Um, and then glaze it right at the end with the blow torch. If you don't have a blow torch, let me know. You can borrow mine, Jen. <laughs> okay. That sounds like uh, the perfect, easy, simple no fuss especially if you're hosting right. and you know the, all the time and the visiting it just sounds like a really good and just what you just described is the presentation alone right what's best to someone else so you must have been slaving <laughs> right i find anytime you pull out a blowtorch when you're making food whether it's creme brulee or ham <laughs> or sous bean steaks or something people are like whoa yeah. How did you find the time to blow torch food? <laughs> right. Well, um, I want to thank you for coming on. Yes. So, again, um, people can find you at jlinteriordesigns.net. Correct. Right? Net? Okay. Yes. Uh, Jen Lowry with uh, JL Interior Design. So she is your one stop for if you want to make your home 
elevate your home, any room in your home, you're going to reach out to Jen and you're going to get a free consultation. Um, a free discovery call. Discovery and call. What's the difference? By phone, a consultation by phone. Absolutely. Okay. And mm -hmm. then from there, we can discuss what more your needs are. If you want us to physically come out or if you'd like to talk about packages that we offer, because like we talked about, there's such a plethora of services that we have. So we want to really nail that down ahead and get as much information as possible. And yeah, yeah, absolutely love to help. Anyone who's looking to stage, design, remodel, we do it all. I love it. Well, thank you for being our guest. We really appreciate it. Thank happy you. holidays to you. Yeah, happy holidays to you too. Thank you so much. And this is Chef Mark with This Dream House. Thanks for tuning in and we're looking forward to you joining us next time.